So I've been trying to set up some more enrichment for my horses. So these are some heavy duty brushes that I bought at the hardware store and I'm gonna set them up as self grooming stations in my horse's field. So these long concrete brushes I bought two of, one for each field. So I'm gonna put this one up on the corner of their shelter because I've noticed some of them scratching their heads just on the post here. So my hope is that they'll scratch their heads on this brush when I put it here. And this is because the last brush I put up inside the shelter, they didn't like using it. They tend to scratch everything outside of the shelter. So I figured that this was a better placement for it. I'm using four heavy duty screws to make it attached to the post to make sure it's on there nice and solid and make sure that the screws go pretty deep into the wood because they're gonna be rubbing rather hard on this. So we just wanna make sure that the brush isn't likely to break and come off. I find that once horses figure out how to use them, they love this form of enrichment and it's a really nice way to just keep them happy and help them out, especially during shedding season when they're quite itchy. So yeah, this is the brush all set up and now I'm gonna start drilling in the next ones after I finish the last screw on this one. So now I'm just setting up these three broom heads and I'm gonna do a T shape so that they have a lot of surface area to scratch their heads and their necks on. So I'm just gonna set it up here and then I'm gonna put the other one just beside the one that I have there. You'll wanna set up the height of your brushes depending on your horse's height. Like if you have ponies, of course, you'll set them up lower than what you would for taller horses. And you can also set up the brushes at different heights all over the place depending on how many grooming stations you wanna make. Now I'm just fixing a slow feeder I made because the super glue that I used to hold the pipes together didn't hold. So I'm just doing more now that it's not as cold and then I'm gonna secure these pipes better. I just made this out of a fish tote that I bought on Facebook Marketplace for $20. And then I bought one inch slow feed netting from the wholesaler that sells netting. And then I got the pipe from the hardware store and I just attached it with zap straps just in case a horse got hooked on it or something like it would undo. And I put hinges on so that it's like a lid that closes and then you clip it down so that they can't push it up while they're eating out of it. And it's just super easy because I hate filling nets because I'm allergic to hay. This is another slow feeder that I made out of a water barrel just by cutting an opening on the front side and then taking the lid off of it on the top and adding some pipe to make like a circular closure on top and then the hay net on the bottom. I made it quickly before the cold snap hit so it wasn't as durable as I liked it to be so I'm just adding some rope to secure it a little bit better and then I'm going to end up securing the hay net to the piping with the rope closures rather than the zap straps just because it's more durable and then I'm also going to drill in a few holes on the front side to have it hold better but I bolted it into their shelter post with heavy duty bolts so it's on there pretty good and it can hold about 60 to 100 pounds worth of hay we'll see how it lasts because the barrel might end up tearing at the sights of the bolts but I did use washers and some other things to help it be more durable this one's also super easy to use my only thing is that when the hay bales are quite heavy they're harder to lift all the way into the opening so in hindsight I might have made the opening on the front rather than on top this was super cheap to make though because I just used old netting from a hay net that had too many holes in it so I was just cutting the pieces from that one and then the piping was only like $20 and I got the barrel off of Facebook Marketplace for like $5. It was pretty fresh and snorty on this day so you'll notice that I use a pretty high rate of reinforcement and this is because she was so fresh and nervous that I didn't want her to be reactive. I want to help her be quiet and calm because you'll notice here she's a little bit nervous about leaving her friends. So yeah I'm using a high rate of reinforcement just to help her self-soothe and kind of help her check in with me because when she does get quite up she can be an awful lot. She hasn't been in years but the way she came out kind of reminisced of her first days back with me after being retired from the racetrack when we were first restarting her so since she was more up than I've seen her in a while because of the weather I just wanted to do a high rate of reinforcement to help her self-regulate a little bit better and hopefully keep her as calm as possible. She's been in the back trails on this property quite a lot, but we've had a lot of trees come down after some windstorms, so it does look quite a bit different here. So all of the horses that I brought out here after the windstorm were quite a bit more nervous just because there's a bunch of spaces that are more open than they used to be. And also deer and coyotes come through here quite a lot. So if they can smell them or they've been here recently, then they're much more awake. There's also a vineyard in behind here and the people that work in it are sometimes hiding in the bushes. So yeah, just 
typically more alert and when they're on days like this where they feel like they're much more likely to be reactive i just like to preemptively help them self-soothe because they're not really going to learn anything if they're really really up and nervous so i try to help them self-regulate as much as possible because it pays off in the long run even if it looks annoying with how often i reinforce in the short term so this fallen tree here is new and she's not seen it before so as you can see she's quite nervous i'm gonna let her stop and look at it and then i click and reward her for like stopping and not trying to turn around and then i'm gonna just wait and kind of give her a minute to process and then we'll see if she'll go forward again there's not really any benefit to trying to kick on a horse who's nervous of whatever's in front of them because they feel like they're trapped between a rock and a hard place so giving them some time to process can be a pretty big payoff because then they can approach it much more quietly after they've processed it from further away and you can see after she decided to walk forward and approach it she's not bothered by it much at all so then we can just continue on and she's more or less relaxing I can feel how tense she is and just how she's much more alert so I can feel it in her body but overall she was honestly really really good and self-regulating excellently despite how up she was So basically how I'm timing my clicks is when I can feel her like tense up or let down from tension and just self-regulate rather than reacting to things that she sees, I'm going to click and reward. And I'm also just doing it intermittently for rewarding calm behavior because I know that she's not feeling internally very calm right now. So making the choice to be calm and not overly reactive when she's feeling a little overstimulated is a good choice and it's one that I need to reward. You'll see right here, she wants to kind of go forward and gets a little bit nervous and then tosses her head and kind of tries to spin a little bit but you'll notice that i keep my reins really loose and i don't pull back i find that a lot of people when their horses are being nervous they'll take up way too much of a hold on the reins and then this makes them more tense so i try to just walk her on a loose rein like she is calm and wait for her to do the wrong thing before i get worried enough to shorten my reins and i just encourage her to kind of walk and stretch and then when she settles down and does it i reward her so it wouldn't be doing any favors to take up a big contact on her like I want to have enough that if she were to really freak out that I can keep myself safe but I don't want to take such a hold of her face that it makes her nervous the fact that she's willing to graze is actually a good thing which is why I let her graze because it's a sign that she's starting to relax but now as we're heading towards her field again and she's walking home she is getting a little bit more nervous and rushy so I might need to do a couple of half halts here or there just to help keep her slow and also this is where I do some halts and I'll click and reward them for halting just to kind of check them and keep them in gear so that they're not like rushing around but you can see she's more resistant to the halts now because she's nervous so I've halted her and then I'm going to click and reward her for standing still and then we're going to carry on and i'm not going to trot her or anything because speed isn't a problem for her but walking and quieting at this point is so now we're turning down the path to go back to her place and you can tell here that she kind of tries to rush so i half halt her because she wants to go trotting and since this is also downhill i don't want that and then she's quite upset from it so i just sit there and i'm not taking a big hold of the reins she's kind of catching herself a little bit and then as soon as she stops we're just walking off again on a loose rein and then i'm going to click her again Again, right as she starts to walk off calmly so that was a reaction that I didn't want but at the same time I'm not going to get mad at her and punish her for it because it's a reaction due to nerves and getting mad at her isn't going to make her less nervous so I just kind of sit there and I'm a passenger through her reaction while keeping things safe for me if she does get reactive and then as soon as she does the right thing I'm clicking and rewarding so there I asked her for a halt she was a little bit resistant to the halt because she wants to go back to her house but I clicked and rewarded her and now we're walking off calmly again and just kind of using my seat to try to help her regulate her speed down the hill i don't want to use as much hand contact because she's more upset by me half halting on the reins than she is by me half halting with my seat now we missed the first part of this but that buckskin pony came trotting over and she was quite upset so you can see that she's flagging her tail and she was snorting and blowing and we were kind of passaging down the path and then she was tossing her head and getting a little bit nervous and kind of striking because he scared her. I don't know how experienced she is with seeing little ponies but especially since it was the little guy running towards her she's quite upset. So now we're just kind of chilling. If she will stand I'm going to allow it and I'm going to reward her for it but if she was dancing around and standing would make her more upset I'm not going to 
demand that she stands. And I'm just trying to ask her for like to walk on a little bit of a diagonal so that she can't race ahead because I want to avoid checking her too much with the reins because I know that is more likely to upset her. So I want to walk her on a loose rein and use my seat and the direction that I send her to kind of bring her back and settle her down. You can see her tail is still flagged, but she's walking more calmly now. But like I can tell by her posture and the snorting and just where her tail set is at that she's not super keen on the environment uh, but she settles well and then walks on nice and calmly which I really like because she was quite up when she was flagging her tail fully and passaging down the path. So I bring her over to my other herd to see if it'll help her self-soothe and regulate at all but she's not really that bothered about seeing them and wants to leave so then we just continue walking because she's not really caring about being near the other horses. So I'm just standing here calmly. She decides she doesn't want to stand anymore so now we're just going to walk off again. I try to ask her to go back towards her friends in the field and she actually doesn't want to. She wants to go the other way which is interesting because that's away from all the horses. Um, so you can see here she gets a little bit upset because she wants she has a direction in mind that she wants to go and it's not back that direction i'm guessing probably because of the pony so now i'm just going to stand here quietly and calmly talk to her and then now we're going to head back towards the pony who is closer to the fence now at least so if he does come running towards us he doesn't have as much ground to cover before he's right up to us when he ran towards her the first time he ran from all the way across the field which really got her going but as you can see they're closer to the fence now so we're just going to walk calmly on a loose rein and just talk to her, kind of prepare just in case she does get upset going past the pony, but just kind of assume that she's not going to. And if she spooks or anything at all, I'm going to just let her spook and um, only really choke up on the reins once I have a reason to. Like if she's rushing or running off and things are getting where I need to keep myself safe, then I will. But otherwise, I'm just going to sit here like a passenger and pretend like nothing's going on because I don't want to make things seem like a big deal to her. So she was pretty quiet walking back, so now we're just having a nice little trot. I have her on a really loose rein, and I'm just kind of letting her pick her path um, around the rocks on the side here. She likes to go in like where the tire marks are from the cars driving down. And yeah, you can see I have a really nice loose rein. We're just trotting along, and then that's about it because she was a good girl. So it was a nice short ride, but we're not going to push anything because she was settled quite nicely. So we had an atmospheric river so the areas that were like high traffic were flooded which really sucks but at least it's only certain areas and the rest of the field's fairly dry and the drainage actually works quite fast once we get a break from the rain but we got so much rain that like even the basement in our house flooded because the sump pump couldn't keep up with it so it's pretty gnarly milo wasn't super keen on walking through the mud but he was a really good boy i decided to hack him back from the top of the field because i didn't want to walk through all of this and and I'm just kind of keep looking back because I'm like, okay, if the other horses come running after us, then we might have a problem where he's going to be quite nervous. Um, so I'm just kind of paying attention and keeping an eye on that just in case. I like giving my horses alfalfa while I brush them and tack them up because it's nicer for them and it makes standing tied more fun. Plus the alfalfa is really nice on their tummies before a ride. It helps coat the stomach and for any horses who might have ulceration issues or anything like that, it just makes everything a lot nicer for them. So it's just a habit that I have because it just makes tying much better and then it improves their ability to tie while also serving the purpose of keeping their stomach coated and full. So I'm just throwing his bareback pad on. Milo hasn't been ridden much over the last little while like I've been riding him maybe like once or twice a month and he's not been ridden in a few weeks and he was also a little bit more nervous today so we're gonna see how he is he's usually quite good at self-regulating despite being a much more reactive and kind of nervous type of horse um, but he's very food motivated and he also trusts me because we've been together for so long so he tends to be like less of a problem in terms of ability to explode than harlow because i can also read him better um so i just ride him bridalist but i'm walking him in here in his halter first so that we can just kind of do some groundwork and so that i have the halter just in case you can see that he notices that the area back here looks different because he's kind of stopping and staring at things and being a little bit of a looky-loo and he was also a bit snorty so when he stops and stares i'm just gonna let him kind of check out what's going on and process it instead of like rushing him and then continue on our merry way 
So with all my horses, since they haven't been doing much in the way of consistent work, I'm just really working on getting them like relaxed and quiet under saddle and just doing like a lot of walking and like walking over these logs as obstacles and just kind of hacking them around as we kind of get back into a more of a fitness program. Milo has a locking stifle, so especially for him, he needs to start off slowly and start to build up that strength because it can get sticky, especially in the winter when he's not been doing as much work. Ever since being out on as much land as he has been, it's been a lot better for him but even still it's something that I want to build up slowly. So this is what I call a really good reaction because the blackberry bush grabs his leg and scares him like watch right here and he gets a little scoot but then he settles right back down and starts walking again after like a little bit of a trot and doesn't overreact so I was really happy with him for that and I clicked and rewarded him after and now whenever he sees anything I just let him kind of check it out and look I talk to him because when he has a chance to process what's going on he's less nervous and he's being a very good boy because honestly like there's not very many horses that you can take out after so much time off just in a neck rope and he used to be the type of horse that very much would not be able to do this safely so I'm just kind of chilling and we're just going about things slowly because there really is no rush and it's just about kind of slowly building confidence and strength and just having fun and um, I find the neck rope helps me just kind of keep things really where he's quiet and okay with them because if he doesn't want to do something he can just ignore it much more easily and he also tends to be way calmer in it like he doesn't really like wearing anything on his head if he can avoid it so since he has been good this has just been kind of what I've been doing because we both enjoy it. The other thing I like about hacking them back here is that there's some really gentle hills and a lot of different terrains so it's kind of a natural way to exercise them at the walk in a way that's more engaging for their body than it would be just to walk them across flat even ground. So I quite like it for that and it's also just kind of nice to have them out in wilderness hacking around. Yay! After the hacks, I'm just putting up the last two brushes in the other field. This is the field with all the geldings and whatnot in it. And I also got them a cement brush. The cement brush is cool because it's like two feet long. So it covers a lot of surface area. So it makes it easier for them to learn how to use it in the first place. So I quite like it for that reason. And I'm just doing the same thing where I'm putting enough screws in to really hold it on there nice and sturdy so they can itch really hard on it without there being problems. And I've put all of their brushes in this sacrifice area for now because this is where they spend the most time in the summer or that's where they tend to spend the most time in the summer. And their other shelter just doesn't have as many good spots to kind of put these things in safely. So that's kind of why most of their self-grooming brushes are down here. Round brush is really cool, but it was really difficult to put in. Eventually I did get it in, but it was really hard. So yeah, 